Episode 8 foreshadows some of the Grishaverse's best literary moments, so Season 3 has the potential to be Shadow and Bone's best if it hews closer to the source material. What happened to Alina and what lies ahead? Alina is no longer a Sun Summoner, which is the shocker of the century revealed in Episode 8. The surviving saint now uses the same term for shadows as the deceased Darkling. The alteration most likely occurred as a result of the summoner raising Mal from the dead using Merzist, the same forbidding magic the Darkling used to create the fold. Merzist is seen as a hazardous perversion of the little science because it constantly requires a sacrifice from the practicing Grisha. The events transpired differently in the novels. Alina summons Merzist in an effort to sap the Darkling of his strength, and the deed nearly ends both of their lives. Using three amplifiers renders Alina completely powerless during their final showdown. Even though Alina initially sought the amplifiers with good intentions, wielding more than one left her craving power for power's sake. Becoming ordinary is the cost of her corrupted ambition. With Ravka saved, she breaks off her engagement with Nikolai and lives a quiet life with Mal. Alina in the series doesn't show signs of the amplifier's negative influence or her Merzist backfiring until the final scene. After using the cut successfully for the first time and with shadows, Alina looks malevolently satisfied. If the Darkling were still alive, he'd be proudly smirking. Like calls to like, after all. Alina is now expected to play a significant role in Ravka, supporting Nikolai during his coronation, though the Fjordan assassin who started the impending Revkin Fjedrin war may put those plans on pause. Also, Alina's position might be in peril if someone observed her call shadows. Predicting Alina's destiny after such a significant departure from the books is somewhat of a crapshoot. The Darkling is too stubborn to stay dead, having said that, Alina returns to the main story in Rule of Wolves, book 2 of Bardugo's Nikolai-centered duology, along with none other than that charming and troubled Darkling. In Rule of Wolves, Sujaya Disgupta plays the roles of Nikolai and Zoyan as Yulensky, who are duped into completing a ritual that will resurrect the Darkling, a man who wants to join the fight against Fjurda and rule Ravka. What did Nikolai see in the mirror? It's not good, as for the dashing Nikolai, the king of Ravka has a very difficult task ahead of him. In episode 8, Nikolai sees a Nichevaya in the mirror, foreshadowing his nightly changes into a monster resembling a Nichevaya with wings, claws, and an insatiable appetite for human flesh. While Nikolai gets poisoned with Merzist and Bardugo's vengeful darkling, Nikolai is stabbed by one of the shadow monsters in Shadow and Bones episode 7 which is likely what led to Nikolai's future metamorphosis. The King of Scar's Rule of Wolves duology covers Nikolai's time on the throne as he tries to balance the political intrigue of healing Ravka by day and transforming into a flesh-craving beast at night. Zoya becomes his closest confidant and helps him look for a cure, and both stubbornly refuse to acknowledge the romantic tension between them. Nikolai learns to control the monster at will, but not a way to eradicate its presence entirely. Zoya, meanwhile, becomes a saint in her own right. Episode 8's mirror reflection makes it pretty clear the Netflix series intends to play with this plot in some form. Where did Mal and Inage sail off to? That's another guessing game when it comes to Mal, Inage, and the rest of Sturman's crew. Alina and Kaz's storylines must once again converge with the Tracker and the Wraiths, but their trips there will be unfamiliar ground. Alina was allowed to wed Nikolai after Book Mal generously offered to step aside, and Inage left the crows at the conclusion of Crooked Kingdom to be with her parents. It appears like these two are deviating from the plot and doing things out of chronological sequence. Given that Kaz is organizing the ice court robbery, Inage might find her crows before Mal does with Alina, or Mal might not last long as the new Sturmund. The scenario is full of potential in either case. No matter how faithfully Shadow and Bone Season 3 depicts its source material, it is safe to anticipate that every character will be put to the test on their journeys, whether they are well-known or brand new. Little needs to be changed in Bardugo's universe from here, because it is already so cruel, stunning, and captivating, especially since Six of Crows is the undisputed reader favorite.